Hi everyone, my name's Heather. Thank you for joining me today. I am excited to be here and working with Arts for All Florida to bring art to your home. So today we're going to be doing a monochromatic painting. So let's get started. We're gonna need a surface, which would be a board or canvas of some sort. Paper will work as well, but I'm just gonna use this little canvas board. Um, you'll need some paint, preferably a solid color like this. I'm a, I chose green. You'll need some uh, green paint or any color, like I said, white or black, a paintbrush, some water to clean out your brush possibly. Um, I'm just gonna use a paper plate to put the paint on and we'll, uh, that's about it. And a drawing pencil to sketch it out first. All right, so first let's talk about color for just a minute. We know when we are creating a piece of artwork, usually it'll contain some sort of color and we can combine colors together to create different feelings or moods. So we're gonna talk about a monochromatic color scheme today. Mono means one and it means we're gonna take one color uh, and you guys will use the color of your choice. For example, I use color, another uh, the color green, and another word we use um, in our vocabulary is hue. So you're gonna choose the hue or color of your choice. And then we are gonna create a monochromatic color scheme by using that color at least once in our painting. And then we'll take that color and add white to it. That will create a tint. And then we'll also take that color again and add black to it to create a shade. So again, we have the hue, which is green. We're gonna create a shade using the black mixed with our green color, and then we'll create a tint using the white, okay? So we have those kind of maybe newish vocabulary words to you, monochromatic, hue, shade and tint. Okay, everybody got that? All right, so the easiest way to create a monochromatic uh, painting is by observing something in nature, which is a mountain range. And in a mountain range, we have the foreground, which is the front, and then we have the background, which is the farthest back. And you can notice in those examples right there, those mountain ranges, that the foreground is darker and the background is always lighter. So when that happens, that gives us that feeling of dimensions. You can also see that those are also in a color scheme, monochromatic color scheme. This one using, using a green color and that one using kind of a purple color. So the first thing that we have to do to create this artwork is you guys will need your drawing board and your pencil. So take a sec and grab that stuff. I'm gonna come up here to my board and we're gonna create six, excuse me, six different sections um, on our canvas. So I'll draw it up here and then I'll quickly kind of move it to this board. And we'll draw it together and then I'll show you how to do the painting part of the process to create your monochromatic color scheme. So what we want to do is make these mountains look like they're overlapping. And what we'll do is we'll start in the foreground and we're gonna create about six different sections. So I'm gonna first draw in a mountain range. This isn't really like a learn to draw assignment. Um, it's more of a painting assignment. So I'm not, I don't need you to worry about how perfect your drawing needs to be. We just need to get some basic mountain shapes in there. So I'm gonna add those in and from there, I'm just gonna add some more kind of coming off what I've already drawn. So you can see I have one, two. Now I'm going to add one up here that comes a little higher. I have three sections. I'm gonna make a smaller mountain right here. And then one that kind of comes behind that. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And in this example here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. You can add more to it if you want. You would just have more values of your color. So for example, um, mine is gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six different values of green. Value just means lightness or darkness of the color, okay? So take a minute and finish that drawing there. You should have six sections at least, okay? Now, while you're finishing up, I'm gonna choose 
where I want to put my first solid color. So in this case, it's just the green. And what I like to do is kind of label this a little bit. You don't have to just make a mental note. I'm gonna put it right in this middle one right here. So I'm gonna write the word hue there. That just is another word for color. Then what's gonna happen is everything below that is gonna be a shade, it's gonna get darker. So I'm gonna write shade in there. Again, you don't have to write this down, I'm just noting. So you know when you go to paint that, this piece, that these mountain ranges right here are getting darker as they come to the foreground. And then as we go back, this mountain re range is going to be a tint, which means it's gonna be lighter, okay? So I'm gonna quickly just finish my drawing on my board right here. Something similar to, similar to that, it's gonna have six sections. One, two, three, I'm gonna try to draw it kind of similar to that one. Three, four, five, and then I'm gonna use the back as six. So it looks something like that, all right? So we are ready to put the paint down on this, okay? Like I said before, right here, and you can, the one I noted on my whiteboard up there, that's gonna be my hue. Everything in front of that or below it are gonna be darker shades. So the first thing I'm gonna do is work my way up and then work my way down. So I'm gonna get my green color and we'll work from there by creating tints and shades, okay? So take a minute, get your paints out, pick your color, and then I'm gonna paint this first section. It's just gonna be right out of the tube. I'm not gonna contaminate it all with black or white. And that's gonna be our starting point. Depending on the size of your canvas, you might need to pause the video and take a little time get that space covered before I move on to the next section. Okay. Depending on the thickness of your paint, you might need a couple coats. I don't have time to do that in this video. So you can see that I painted my first little mountain green. Okay, so the next mountain that I think I'm gonna work on is this one. It needs, to, actually I'm gonna go lighter. So what I'm gonna do is take this green color right here and add some white to it so I get a little bit of a lighter value. Now we don't wanna waste a ton of paint when we do this, so sometimes it's better to take a little pile of white, add your green to it like this, the green you were just using to get a lot lighter value. If you start dumping in a bunch of white paint into your pile of green, you tend to waste a lot of paint. So I just made a little pile of white and then scoop some green out and made that lighter color. So we can definitely see that's lighter. So I'm just gonna now paint that next section behind. So you can see now I'm working on that section right there. And I'm gonna fill in all that space. This green color kind of reminds me of leprechauns or Minecraft, but the whole point is that it just needs to be lighter, okay? So now I'm gonna do the, the sky. And again, I'm gonna take a little pile of white right next to what I already just did and then I'm gonna pull a little color from that pile I just used and mix it in. Again, that prevents us from wasting a ton of paint. Work from the pile you had before. And you can see now that's a lighter green. And that's exactly what we want. So I'm just gonna mix it up so it's nice and even. And then now I'm gonna cover this section, it's gonna take a minute because I'm using kind of a little brush, but you guys go ahead and get that paint mix, pause the video if you need to, 
to complete that section. So I just taught this to my art class yesterday and I let them all choose their own color or their own hue and I thought it was really fun that not one person in the class chose the same color. So by the time we were done, we had a display of all these monochromatic paintings that were different colors. Yellow, orange, blue, red, purple, and sitting one right next to the other looked really amazing. Like it could have been a nice collaborative piece in itself. Collaborative means that you are working with another artist on your artwork. So they were individual paintings, but if you were to display them all together right next to each other on purpose, it would then become a collaborative piece. All right, so finish up the back section and I'm really loving how this light green color is coming. This tint of green is awesome. Okay, so there we have it right there. So we now have um, two tints because we added white. Now we're gonna do the same thing but we're gonna just um, move down our painting I'm gonna take some more, actually I still have some green on my palette that hasn't been contaminated. We don't wanna mix the black in with anything that has already had white in it because that then becomes a tone and we're not doing a tone right now. So I'm gonna get a little bit of black paint on my plate. I'm gonna clean off my brush so it doesn't have any white paint in it. And then I'm going to get up some of my green paint and a little bit of black. And what I'm doing, what I'm trying to get here is just a darker color, a darker color, darker value than that main green that I used, okay? So you can see that's already happening right here. Here's the original green that doesn't have anything in it. This is the one I just mixed with black. Now, I don't want to go too dark because I have two more spots that I have to um, cover, okay? Two more mountain ranges. And so they're going to have to be darker than this one. So if I make this one like almost black, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very difficult to get it any darker. So I think this one does the trick. It's quite green and it's darker than that small mountain we started with. So take a minute, mix that paint up. Again, we just want a value that's darker than the very first color we started with. Now we don't have a whole lot of time on this video, so I'm not doing my best work. I think you guys are getting the idea. And if you obviously need to take more time, you do that. Okay, we have two more sections to complete. So here, you can see that that went darker, and I'm gonna do that two more times. I'm gonna work off that same pile that I just had, that I just made up. I'm, I'm just adding some more black to it, so it gets darker than what I just used. Sometimes it's hard to tell once you get too dark but you just have to remember, if you're working out of the same pile and you add a black, it's definitely gonna be darker. Okay, so there you go. Right there, I got a darker color and I'm gonna add that and then I'll need one really dark color to finish it off for that last section. So I'm gonna quickly paint that, this little section right here. Remember, we're moving towards the foreground Foreground's always darkest. And then the background, always the lightest. And that gives us that three-dimensional depth we're looking for. All right, so you can see that's coming together really well. That's darker. And then we're gonna do that last section. I'm just gonna pull some more black into it. And as, as long as it's darker than what I just worked with, we're good to go. So I just mix that black in right there. And that almost looks like it's pure black, but I know better because I put the green in it. 
so it's not pure black. It's almost like a dark, dark army green, and I'm gonna get that covered in there, and then we will almost be done with our piece. So I hope each of you choose an amazing hue or color to work with. In this one, I used the color green. I added white to create a few more values or tints. And then I add a black to create a few more shades. And then we have a very simple, quick masterpiece, monochromatic painting of our mountain ranges with the darkest shades in the front and the lightest uh, tints in the back. So great job, everyone. Thanks for watching Arts for All Florida, Spotlight on Art. I hope you enjoy doing this uh, artwork with me. If you like this video, please comment below and share it with a friend. And of course, we'd love to hear from you. Feel free to post your own creations on social media. And remember to tag us by using our handle at Arts for All Florida. That's art, the number four, All Florida. See you next time.